Now, Mohammed Hadid, real estate developer and father of supermodels Gigi and Bella Hadid, has sent dozens of racist and homophobic messages to a politician over the span of months after the openly gay congressman defended Israel in the aftermath of the October 7 massacre. Mohammed Hadid has now issued an apology of sorts. I don't, I'm not sure if it is an apology. In a statement, he said, I need to apologise, not for the anger I feel, but for the words I use to express that anger. I intended to express how Mr Torres is a shill being used by Israel, a state that not only mistreats black and brown people, but pink washes their atrocities using their projected gay rights as a shield for their human rights violations. Oh, goodness me. Joining me now is entertainment and royal reporter Kinsey Schofield. Kinsey, Mohammed uh, Hadid, in fact, the whole Hadid family are no strangers to political activism. The supermodels have been outspoken on Israel and, and Palestine. What can you tell me about this latest episode? Yeah, I mean, both daughters have faced controversy just over social media activity. Gigi famously <coughs> shared an infographic to Instagram, also posted by her father, which read, there is nothing Jewish about the Israeli government's treatment of Palestinians. And the Israeli government fought back and they said there's nothing valiant about Hamas's massacre of Israelis. Bella Hadid once told her followers every day, I wish I could go back in time to when I was a child so that I could start fighting for Palestine sooner Obviously, this is their hill. Um, the executive director of Stand With Israel posted the Mohammed Hadid story about harassing rapper Chi Torres with the caption, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, and, you know, I, I think that Mohammed is... is very disruptive online, posting an infographic on Instagram comparing the Israeli government to Nazis in the past. It, it's all just very... Uh, it, it's not helpful. It's not... It, everything seems to be hateful in his in his verbiage. Now, TV host Bill Maher is going viral for his take on what he describes as endemic pedophilia in Hollywood. Let's have a look. At least 35 Disney employees had been arrested for sex crimes against children, and in 2021, Disney child star Allison Stoner confessed she only narrowly survived the toddler to train wreck pipeline. The next year, child star Cold Sprouse told the New York Times that young actresses at the Disney Channel were heavily sexualized from an early age. You know, Willie Sutton said he robbed banks because that's where the money is. And the reason we find pedophiles in the Boy Scouts and the Rectory and Kids TV is that's where the kids are. <laughs> Brian Peck, who was one of the lead creeps at Nickelodeon, served 16 months in prison for the molesting he did there. Disney hired him, naturally, to work on a children's series. Oh, for pedophiles in Hollywood, it's a small world after all. <laughs> Kinsey, you're in California. You're uh, close to that whole scene. Uh, is what he's saying, what's what he's uh, saying there, having an impact in Hollywood, or are they just uh, blind to this sort of criticism? Because it normally comes from conservatives. It's, it's unusual for it to come from someone like Bill Maher. And that's what his point was, that we've become so divisive that if somebody from the opposite end of the spectrum, like Ron DeSantis, makes the, the criticism, we immediately shut it down. I think it is, this, it is the norm here. Think about Disney kid Demi Lovato, her 2018 drug overdose, her temporary they-them period. And while we're talking about the importance mm -hmm. of words, she says calling extraterrestrials aliens is offensive to extraterrestrials. I mean, that is a Disney kid gone sour. <laughs> words for you, Miley Cyrus. I'm still haunted by her twerking at the MTV Awards. Lindsay Lohan, she looks like she's found her footing lately, but there were there was a very long period of time where we could collect her mug shots like, you know, ba baseball cards. Um, so I think that it's just par for the course here in Hollywood. You know, it, it really is. No child is protected. Think about the way they brought us Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, and all of a sudden they were wearing buttless chaps. I mean, it was like overnight. 
Well, there's been so many cases of child stars who've had really quite ugly uh, periods in adulthood and sometimes with, with tragic endings. Now, let's talk about P. Diddy. Fox Nation have done a deep dive into the rapper's, uh, well, past, present. Uh, it's a documentary on Sean Combs called What Did He Do? What, can, what is the latest there? Are there any interesting revelations in this documentary? And at what stage is the investigation into him? Well, I mean, I do think it's important to remember that there are no criminal charges so far. It's only civil charges. And one of the last surprising um, updates we got was his son getting into trouble, a woman accusing his son of very similar um, activities. Uh, now, Combs' team mm. says that... Um, the, two of these accusers, they point out, are represented by an attorney named Tyrone Blackburn. And Combs' team says that they haven't even been officially served for some of these civil charges. And that Blackburn has one objective, and that is fast cash. They want Diddy to settle, which he tends to do. Um, you know, he he's settled a lot of these civil cases. So I can understand why that would be the automatic assumption. Uh, but you are seeing more people speak out. Freddie P of DeBand claims Diddy's, you know, threatening his life forced him to leave. Aubrey O'Day of Danity Kane says that she was fired because she wouldn't compromise her morals with Diddy. And I think we are going to hear more of these stories. Oh, I think so. And I think those raids that were carried out on his properties, uh, not just one property, they, they were simultaneous raids on multiple properties. Uh, there's, there's a lot of information that was gathered there. And uh, I think uh, we will hear more about that in the coming months. Now, this is a strange story, Kinsey. An old video, we're talking about some seven years ago, an old video of Charles and Camilla is doing the rounds again, causing all sorts of outrage on social media. Uh, the then prince and his wife are giggling at some throat singing. Let's have a look. <laughs> now... I don't know what else they're expected to do other than laugh at that, but apparently that's outrageous and racist and shows that they're not culturally sensitive. There's all sorts of commentary flying around now from the keyboard warriors who are upset by that footage uh, some seven years later again, I hasten to add. Uh, what do you make of this story? I mean, I don't automatically associate laughter with criticism. I automatically associate laughter with joy. They were looking at each other like they were loving the experience and that they when they they couldn't wait to discuss it when it was over. Um, I think that people on the Internet are just so bored. And I think I think I've heard you say it allergic to happiness. Like what's going on? I don't <laughs> I don't see an issue here. I think that they are just happy to be there. They're looking at each other like they understand and they are are joyful. That that's all I see there. <laughs> 